What is a hyperproperty? An ordinary property is a predicate that's true or false of a single execution of a system. For example, the property that every request receives a response. Verifying that a system satisfies a property means showing that every execution of the system satisfies the property. A hyperproperty is a predicate that's true or false on the set of executions of a system, not just on single executions. Some security conditions are naturally expressed as hyperproperties. For example, observational determinism, or OD. OD assumes that an execution is a sequence of states, and a state consists of two parts, a public state and a secret state. OD requires that if any two executions have the same initial public states, then they always have the same public states. This is an assertion about pairs of executions, not about a single execution. Another example is GNI, short for Generalized Non-Interference. It assumes that an execution is a sequence of public and secret events. It's a way of saying that the public events give you no information about the secret events. For any two possible system executions, GNI requires that you can get a possible system execution by combining the public events of the first and the secret events of the second. Again, it's an assertion about more than one execution. How do we verify that a system satisfies a hyperproperty? Verifying ordinary properties has been well studied. We want to make use of methods and tools developed to solve it. So people have reduced verifying hyperproperties to verifying ordinary properties. Here's how. Define two mappings. The first maps a system S to another system, omega of S. The second maps a hyperproperty H to an ordinary property, H tilde. These mappings are defined so that system S satisfies hyperproperty H if and only if the system omega of S satisfies the ordinary property H tilde. Verification has been done this way with a method called self-composition, where if hyperproperty H is an assertion about N executions, then omega of S is a big system that executes N copies of S in lockstep, and H tilde is H restated in terms of executions of the individual processes S in an execution of omega of S. For example, suppose the hyperproperty H is observational determinism. Then omega of S consists of two copies of S run in lockstep, and H tilde asserts that if those two copies of S start with equal public states, then they will always have equal public states. There's a problem with this kind of self-composition. It doesn't work for some security hyperproperties, including GNI. GNI says that for any two behaviors of S, there exists a third behavior of S satisfying a certain condition. With self-composition, these two behaviors are described by this big system omega of S. The third behavior of S is described by GNI. So GNI tilde must contain system S, which it can't because GNI tilde is a property. And how can you put a system in a property? Here is our solution. It works for some additional security properties, including GNI. We use the temporal logic TLA. TLA has industrial strength tools and is used by engineers who build large distributed systems. TLA describes systems, as well as properties, as formulas. System S satisfies property P, means that the formula S implies P is true. The system obtained by running n copies of S in lockstep is defined as follows. The definition begins with S of X sub 1, which is the formula obtained by substituting a new set of variables, X sub 1, for the variables of S. Formula S of x sub 1 asserts that the values assumed by the variables of x sub 1 during an execution satisfy the specification of system S. And similarly for x sub 2 through x sub n, all different sets of variables. In TLA, conjunction is parallel composition, 
So this is a system composed of n copies of system S executing in parallel. And K asserts that the copies run in lockstep. I don't have time to explain how K is defined. It is now easy to define the property asserting that S satisfies GNI. Here are the two copies of S that execute in lockstep. This composite system must satisfy, that is, this formula must imply, that there exists another execution of S represented by the values of the variables X sub 3, with the right relation among the three executions, that is, the values of the public variables of X sub 3 equal those of X sub 1, and the values of its secret variables equal those of X sub 2. Unfortunately, expressing GNI is not this easy. TLA, like most temporal logics, models a system execution as a sequence of states. GNI and some other security hyperproperties were originally described in terms of executions as sequences of events. To translate from events to states, we model an event as a change of state. To translate GNI, we assume a state is a public state, secret state pair, like this. A public event is one that changes the public state. A secret event is one that changes the secret state. So this sequence of events becomes this sequence of states. This public event changes the public state. This secret event changes the secret state. So every event is either a public event or a secret event and the events are replaced by the state changes. And similarly, this sequence of events becomes this sequence of states. The TLA version of GNI, which I showed you before, asserts that if these two system executions are run in lockstep, then there exists a third system execution whose public states come from the first execution and whose secret states come from the second execution. But there's a problem here. This state change changes the public state, so it's a public event. This state change changes the secret state, so it's a secret event. But this state change changes both the secret and public states, which makes it both a public and secret event. So this isn't a system execution, because GNI assumes that the system allows state changes that are either public or secret events, but not both. This problem is inherent in our TLA definition of GNI. This definition is wrong. Instead of having to execute the two copies of the system in lockstep, a correct definition of GNI should allow them to be executed like this. GNI assumes these two executions appear the same to public users, who just see this. Most formalisms consider these to be different executions because of this extra state. But that means users can tell when secret events occur between public events. TLA considers these two executions to be the same because that extra step leaves the state seen by the user unchanged. TLA at first seems strange to most people because steps that leave the state unchanged can't be required or forbidden by a TLA formula. But that's one reason TLA is simple. This restriction helps ensure that a spec can assert only what it should. For example, a specification of an hour-minute clock should not assert that the clock does not display the temperature or doesn't display seconds. A TLA spec can't say that. That's why implementation is simply implication. A main contribution of the paper is that this feature of TLA is also important for expressing hyperproperties. This feature provides flexibility in aligning executions. It enables simple specifications of a class of hyperproperties that includes GNI. You'll have to read the paper to find out how it's done. It's not obvious. What's in the paper? I've been doing a lot of hand-waving. The paper contains the details. They're explained with two toy systems that satisfy GNI. There are TLA specifications of these other security hybrid properties. There is a characterization of when a hyperproperty is preserved under refinement. The paper contains toy examples, but TLA is not a toy. Others have written a machine check TLA proof of observational determinism for a real-time message passing system that was later commercialized. 
The paper explores the relation of that work to ours. On the web, you can find model check TLA specifications of the examples in the paper, and all about TLA so you can try it yourself. Thank you.